Welcome, everybody, to Rimmel. Today, 400 episodes into this series, I've decided it's time. It, today, we're going to build ourselves a dinosaur theme park. We're, we're going to build ourselves the actual dinosaur enclosures. I've got some extra little mods here that should help us out a little bit with just the maintenance of the dinosaurs and hopefully not spending hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours building it all. I've also started planning out this perimeter wall a little bit neater uh, so that we can focus on containing the dinosaurs inside a particular area just in case they manage to break out the cages, just in case we get drop pods in that zone as well. We, got, we are going to have to sort of slice off the base pretty significantly to be able to defend better against drop, drop pods because the only issue with control of the map like this is wherever drop pods land we're gonna be fucked right so let's focus firstly on i want to get obviously this area all set up in this area cordoned off so that at least the front gate is dealt with that way if we do get traditional raids we haven't got to worry about things so much because this zone is all self-contained then we can focus on the dinosaur the, the dinosaur side of dinosaur things one thing I have done is I've installed a mod that allows us to craft more of the crafting hauling bots. Oh, sorry, the, the, the uh, cleaning bots and hauling bots as well. Because if we're making this park six times as big, but we're not getting any new characters, or at least not as many new characters, then we do need to consider how are we going to run this thing. We're basically looking at like 500 square tiles per colonist at this stage. So we need to be very careful. Now what I've done is, is that there's a mod that allows you to create the crafting bots and the hauling bots, but that mod also comes with some other bots as well so very basic construction bot bots very basic gardening bots things like that if we ever do end up using the construction bots and the gardening bots because they generally tend to be quite op they're not as op as the robotics plus plus mob which we don't have installed i should point that out so no omni bots no upgradable robots at all no different various tiers because that's a very op mod by the end of it we don't even need colonists right so I'm going to try and avoid using the Android mod so much, but I am going to, don't mind using the robots instead, because I still want the, obviously, colonists are the main point in the world, right? So I don't want it to just be faceless Androids running things. I, I figured our guys will still have a, a big need, but we'll just have to, the, the, the basic needs can be dealt with by just these very shitty craftable robots. The question is, how do we craft them? Ah, there's the answer right in front of us right there. Actually, they're fairly expensive, aren't they? Um, to say that the cleaning bots and the hauling bots literally just carry things around and sweep up the floor. 250 steel and 10 components is quite a lot. How many, how much steel have we got right now? Uh, raw resources. Let's take a look. We are at, uh, so, oh, we've got 7,500 steel. So we could churn out a few of them, but of course we've still got to churn out the rest of those exoskeletons, the rest of our armor sets, the rest of our defenses as well. We've only got a few turrets down right now. I think we should make maybe, what, I mean, what skill does the crafting bot craft at? That's the real question. Um... I honestly don't know. I imagine it's just really basic stuff, huh? Let's make a garden bot, a crafting bot, a mining bot, a construction bot. And let's just see what they can do. I'm also going to make a couple of hauling bots. Actually, no. Let's make more construction bots than hauling bots. Because for, building, for doing big building jobs, like building out these walls, then we're going to need a lot of help with it. Because we only have, uh, like, three or so builders that are any good. But for building, the, obviously, the, the, the glorious... Jade Hotel, which is almost done, by the way. We've just got to get a couple of bathrooms in, a couple more beds, a few doors here and there. No problem. When, we when we're when we building this, obviously, we'll need our best builders doing that. But if our best builders are working on vanity projects, they can't build up the actual dinosaur part, which is partially why I installed these bots. So we'll see how well the bots do. Um, you know, as long as they're not too OP, I don't mind using them. But we'll, we'll sort of get a feel for it before I commit a load of resources to it. So the other thing I want to do today, and another reason for going the robots, is so that we can focus on many different jobs like this at the same time, is I want to get either the obelisk or the Tesla coil. Now... I'm going to assume the obelisk is much more powerful, but will... Oh, requires... Man, yes, yes. Oh, for manual targeting, doesn't matter. Automatic targeting is fine. I kind of want to build one of these, because they look awesome. So this one's a laser beam. This one is obviously your energy coil. I'd like to get both, just so we can test them out. They might have various different uses. You know, one might be heat damage. The other might be some other type of damage. I was going to say, what other else? I mean, they've got to both be heat or to some extent. Anyway, let's get this purchased for 10,000 silver... And let's build ourselves a giant glowing red... Because that way, even if the dinosaurs break out of prison, we can laser beam our, our dinosaurs if they if they betray us. One thing we could also do as well is turn back on the extract DNA and turn back on the DNA reconstruction bench and actually start building some dinosaur eggs. And we've already got a lot of animals to put in our zoo. We've got a shitload of aero fleets. We've got the Kavixes, the Great Devourers. We've got the Mercoy Colossus. We've got this spooky man with his weird little creepy fingers. We've got Diddly Steven over there. And of course, we've got like our raptors or two that we can put in there. So that would be uh, we, we've already got, honestly, quite a decent amount of, not exactly zoo level, but enough for like, you know, a, what's smaller than a zoo? A petting zoo? Don't pet the Great Devourer. Let's call it an animal enclosure. We could put down some enclosures to start off with anyway. It's, it's not really going to have much of an effect, but we can get them out of this horrible, shitty little barn at the back of the base where they're basically not doing anything. It's kind of borderline animal cruelty right now. That android has stolen that dinosaur. 
Could you get off that? Because I don't think... I think we'll get in trouble if they... I don't know what will happen if they try and leave and he's riding our dead dinosaur. Group of Federation soldiers from Section Row have arrived nearby. You're probably thinking, that can't be too bad. What the hell am I looking at right here? Um, Peace Monga. Oh my god, they've all got like unique weapons. I thought that this was... Oh my god, Plasma Casters, Crucible Rifles. What is that? Crucible Cannon? There's actually only one person, like one human here. That, what's he wearing there? Mechanoid Controller? He's, they've all got these weird... I don't know, sort of half machine weird little things going on. Uh, so this entrance is still, uh, although it's not finished, they should still go through the kill box. Um, yeah, so let's check the roof right there. All right then, team. Uh, let's get this set up and ready to go. So I'm going to say, uh, so let's get everybody equipped from Armor Rack. Equipped from Armor Rack. Equipped from Armor Rack. Uh, someone's still not. I guess it's uh, one of our builders, yeah? Okay, there we go. Now, which one of these guys is good at building, if anyone? Construction 16. Right, so you start working on the chem fuel generators. Let's see if we can get these turrets online before these guys get through the kill box. Come on, team. Let's get ourselves equipped. Okay, this is this is working pretty good now. Look at that. Uh, Glinx, where's your armor, friend? Uh, gl Glinx? 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 Glinx. There we are. I don't know why they've equipped their gun, but none of their armor. Right, let's try that again. Equip from armor rack? Sometimes, look, it's still a little bit, I will admit, it's sometimes still a little bit, uh, a little bit janky. But it, it is still better than, obviously, having to manually equip this many people. Oh, aid in the tank. There we go. That's looking a lot better. Uh, what happened to that gun that I asked you to pick up that was quite clearly on the rack a second ago? There we are. Okay, throw that on the floor. It, it, again, it is still a little bit janky, but it's working kind of okay this time. And that's everybody equipped, right? Oh, besides Android Android 1, will you piss off? Right, uh, so you need to come into this direction. No, you've still not got your armor on, though. Uh, oh, maybe that's all Glinx actually had in the end. Maybe they didn't have an armor set. So where's Spleen's? Hey, Spleen's, uh, could you could you please get your armor equipped as well? Right, how are we looking? Are we, have we got time? We have got time. We'll start getting everybody over there now, though, because we're only waiting on, the, like, one more person. Right, run, 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 run. Thank you very much. There we go. Now, who was building up these? Uh, was it by Slot Machine? Slot Machine, what are you doing? Hurry up. Hauling chem fuel? Why? We haven't got the steel over there yet. I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going on there, but we'll wait and see. Okay, wait. wait what? Wait, yeah, yeah. Hauling chem fuel? What do you mean, hauling chem fuel? Hauling steel. Oh, maybe it said hauling steel to chem fuel. Right, okay. Don't don't blame me. I can't read. Okay, how are we doing? Let, okay, so you guys are now ready. And the hauling bot's coming over and grabbing all the gear again, which is a little bit annoying. Right, everyone into position. Good luck. I don't know what the hell we're up against here. I don't know what these things can do. Some of them seem much, much larger than others. I'm a little bit scared. And I'm not even sure that they'll flee, because they probably count as animals, don't they? Enemy tame critter. Right, now, that's probably not going to encourage them to flee. So I think this might be a fight to the last man. Bear in mind, all of our other raids have gone smoothly because the enemies have started fleeing quite early on. Shit, these turrets are not going to be built in time, are they? Slot machine, for fuck's sake. You're so slow. Oh, Jinx is pissing off. Thanks, Jinx. Very cool. Hall and bot 15 hit a trap. Thank you very much. Appreciate that one, too. Get into position. Spread out a little bit. Spread out, spread out, spread out. Okay, here we go. Well, I guess it starts, then. Oh, God. They seem... Okay, that's fine. Well done. Well done. Good good work. Actual Cannibal, I need you to move slightly over a little bit so you do less damage to the walls. Aiden, same with you, my friend. If we can get you as far away as possible so you do less damage to these bloody walls. This might be okay. It's going to be risky either way. Let's um, let's crank the speed a little bit because there's not a lot we can do now that everybody's in position. Keep going, slot machine. I believe in you. Okay, good work. Good work. Good work. That's it. Keep, keep the firepower going. God, these napalm launchers are so powerful, aren't they? This is the only thing saving us between that and like complete annihilation at the hands of this. So the, the when this thing comes around, that's when I think we might need to be scared. Maybe they'll flee when we kill Raven. I actually don't know. Well, he's dead. Um, uh, do we not get their weapons as well? So they've all got weapons equipped, but I guess it's similar to mechanoids. When they die, they don't actually drop anything. Um, thank God it's raining again, by the way, as we're using these fucking crazy uh, napalm launchers. Every time we've used them, it's, it's always rained not long after that. It's quite nice. All right, let's go. Let's go. Like, um, let's crank up to speed two then. Seeing as again, we can't really do much at this stage. We've, this is the best situation we've got right now, so we've just got to kind of pray that this works. No, no, no. Stop that right now. Go home. Go, go and hide in the hotel. Thank you. All right. Good luck, team. Where's that big boy? Okay, the big boy is is basically stuttered right to the back of the uh, right to the back of the queue there. Right. Speed up. Oh, what is that thing? Okay, Dominique. Uh, haul ass. Thank you. You got you haul ass as well. That looks like a big explosive. Oh, those are big explosives. Wow. Holy shit. Those things look kind of lethal. Um, I'm going to have to do a little bit of micro here. They've destroyed our walls with it, too. Good God. Who are you? Sabarian. Who the fuck is Sabarian? One of our... Oh, God. The robots are coming over to help out. I don't know if that's a good thing. So I feel like they're just going to die and then blame me for it. But hey. As long as we... Oh, God. As long as we avoid those things, we should be okay, I think. Back up a little bit. Get back behind the embrasures. 
Man, this was a bit sketchy, but I think we're going to be okay. I don't think we're going to lose anyone specifically. I'm worried about our allies, to be honest. That's the one thing I think that actually might fuck us up. Oh, that one caught fire as it was running past. So did that one. Nice, 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 nice. There we go. Come on, take it. Take, take out that big guy. Get out of the way. What are they doing? Of course we attack Theodore when he's in the fucking kill box. Weird man. Right, kill that thing before it fires. It's down, it's down, it's down. Okay, okay, okay. So there's two more. Again, they're not going to flee because they're animals. So we're just going to have to let them come to us, unfortunately. The rain stopped. So if we did want to try and grab this thing, now's the time to do it. Okay, you know what? I'm going to undraft everyone. We're going to try and put the fires out because they might have some uh, valuable stuff for us to salvage here. Okay, here we go. Oh, God, they are coming back. They are coming back. Okay, everyone back off again. Draft up. Let's get back behind these walls. Well, that was fun. That was a nice little uh, nice little distraction there from building <laughs> the dinosaur part like the rest of the entire series. Okay, you guys also need to back off. Actual Cannibal Shallow Buff, get out of there. Okay, there we go. There we go. And what about these last two? They are... So one's moving out of the kill box. One's moving down the kill box. My God, those attacks do a lot of damage though, don't they? That's like 2,000 plus damage spread over the course of... A relatively small area, to be honest. Which, I mean, if we get caught in that far, people, unarmored people got caught in that. They would be destroyed. Those, those things have absolutely... And to say that they can also fire that off whilst coming under a massive barrage from the majority of our people here. it These things could be a real, real problem. What weapon have they got? Because I might build some of those my own. Plasma caster. Remember that. Remember that. Because I might build... Imagine everybody equipped with those. Or half our people equipped with those. Half our people equipped with the flame launchers. Like, that could be unreal. Oh, shit. Okay, honestly, I was expecting them to move through that. Man, that also does a lot of damage then even to armored enemies. So it does a lot of... It just does burn damage. It looks like it bypasses armor completely. Because given what Aiden's wearing right now. Yeah, wow. That was interesting. It was nice to see some of the Federation tech. Those plasma casters look like they could be a lot of fun. Nice, there we go. So the first step of our, our obelisk is finished. So now we've got to experiment with energy weapons, which I think involves just using this thing. Oh! <gasps> He's back. Trash is up on his feet. Oh my god, and he doesn't have brain damage either. I didn't even notice he was back up. Wilfred Trashy Logan. Up on his feet. Well fed. A tasty, tasty stew there for Trashy. My god. It's like nothing ever changed. He's just he's just back up on his feet in like a second. Holy shit. And then these two are just about to finish the uh the, the, the brain implant as well. Which of course we were trying to get tr for Trashy just in case. We didn't we didn't even need it. So why don't we focus on if we go to the prosthetics, which I assume is where it comes from, right? Um N no. Okay, where do we get the brain implants? Anybody know? Uh, maybe maybe from the maybe from the machining table. Apparently not. Um, probably from the fabri fabrication bench in that case. No, I have no idea. I'll find it in a second. Well, one thing I've noticed as well is I've got these bots being uh, built. The bots uh, apparently have no skill. They can just craft. So this robot, for example, is currently crafting assault armor. They're very slow. I will admit. So look, look, we're on speed four right now. And it's not particularly fast, even on speed four. Granted, they can work, not exactly, uh, not not exactly all day. They do need recharging, just as obviously the, the people on the colony need sleep. But they can work quite consistently, and obviously uninterrupted. They don't need to stop for food or to go to the bathroom, or they don't need to stop for thirst or anything like that. These things can just keep working over and over and over and over. Now. To be honest, it's not really that fast. Also, bear in mind that that workbench is affected by these four benches here and the two tailor benches, and it's an upgraded tailor bench as well. In this scenario, they're probably not too balanced because they do have the opportunity to make their work faster than that you would be able to in base game Rimmel. But for base game Rimmel, they're probably balanced quite well. No. No, not again. Oh, no, not again. I, I can't. I can't put this in the video. I can't put it in the video. They're... No. The team's back together. The team's back together after all this time. I'm so happy. So what I'm doing is, is I'm getting Trashy a new set of gear built, getting him the lab coat and the and the jumpsuit as well, or the whatever he's missing now. I think it is his jumpsuit, isn't it? Just so that he gets that work speed. I've given him the exo frame too, because we did have we did have a spare one of those. I've got um who was Beaver? Who was Beaver? That's a great question. Glinks, I think, was Beaver. Glinks is now building some more exo frame suits as well, so that hopefully we get everybody equipped with those because they just help so much with, with work speed generally. Now, the obelisk experimentation with the energy weapons is done. The next step is to actually build the damn thing. So this is uh this is gonna be what we've been building up to for quite some time here. So let's go Rematomics. Let's go. Oh, there they are. Ob oh, what can we build out of? Like an amber obelisk? That is so cool. Okay, um, we might have to build an amber obelisk in that case. Which way around does it need to go? I don't think it really matters. I imagine you want the, the big red gem aiming towards the enemies, right? Uh, what else can we build it out of? 
steel. We've got uh, forum is the thing that the um the the the, the federation guys who just attacked us. When they die, they drop this this forum stuff, which is basically stronger than plast steel. Um, that would make a lot of sense if we build it out of that. We're literally building new defenses out of the out of the fallen bodies of our enemies. You get it when you butcher the uh, Federation creatures. Fuck it, let's put one down. Oh, what's the range on this thing? Oh, it's massive. It's gigantic. Um, in that case, 100% accuracy with long range and devastating power. If we put it there, not only can it cover the kill box, but it can cover a lot of the base as well. It can defend the Jade Hotel as well and the front entrance to our regular base. I'm going to put it there. I'm going to put it right there. My god, this thing seems incredibly powerful. So it's 100 steel, 10 components, 1 advanced components, and, and obviously 275 forum. Or whatever the hell you want to build out of. This could be, uh, this could be very interesting. That dinosaur, by the way, apparently permanently ours. The allied pack animal, that's ours. Now, Android 2 cannot get off of it. So he's permanently a dinosaur. He's a dinosaur-android hybrid. Like, I've never once seen him get off of this dinosaur. So that's just uh, permanently ours now, I guess, which is quite nice. The brain chip implants, which we need kind of desperately, you actually get, as it says there, it unlocks new recipes on the tissue printer. So we actually do need to churn that out from, from there. The only reason I want to get those as soon as possible is, I mean, look at Ian Goldblum now. Moving incredibly, again, speed four. He's got the exoskeleton, which should increase his movement speed. He's got all those clothes, which should increase his movement speed. Between the Etherbroken and uh, Dementia and Frail, my god, I didn't consider all of those stacking down. And this is after he's got the stew as well. Man, this is um, this is very very bad. Without Stu, he would be uh, he would be really fucked. He would be in like a seriously bad situation here. So I think I did get a tissue builder print right. Oh, a tissue builder print right. What the hell does that mean? A tissue printer builded, uh, built. It's they're, they're working on it. They're working on it. We just need someone else to actually go over there and finish it off. I might even get Aiden to go and quickly churn that out so that we can uh, we can let the crafting bots do it if they've got the skill to do so overnight. There we go. Okay, so let's see. Oh, nice. Look at that. So we can craft all sorts of just... There's like Brain Stimulator, which does basically the same thing. So it gives 100 plus... Uh, plus 100% consciousness, but it's limited at 65%. So Free and Goblin, that would actually be a step up. However, I believe we can craft these ones here, AI chips, which are the same thing, but don't have that max of 65% cap. They do cap at 100%. But for Ian, where his consciousness is already so low anyway, this would be shitty to install on our regular colonists. But it would be great for someone like Ian who needs it kind of desperately. What about Aiden? I imagine Aiden's sort of in the similar situation, huh? Uh, needs health. Consciousness is also poor. Etherbroken is just... It's because it's at minus 30, it's actually not very good at all. So let's get a couple of those to help cancel out the whole laying, uh, laying mutated eggs type of thing that's uh, apparently broken them mentally. Get a couple of those ordered up. We'll see if the robots can do it overnight. Now, I'm also crafting a couple more hauling bots as well. Because we are expanding the base so rapidly, because we get, we're get we going to obviously have all of this extra area built, we are going to need a lot more hauling bots to be able to deal with that, just managing the food, carrying the animal resources back and forth. It, it's going to be a lot to try and manage with just these colonists, like I said. I'm going to move on to a mod that I've actually no experience with at all, that I think always has appealed to me. Looks looks really, really interesting. It's called Glitternet, which essentially allows us to build... Um, networks basically hence the whole net thing so this is a a huge mod like really really expandable i mean you can see all the various amounts of research we've got going on here looks to be a very very advanced end game type thing i mean look at all this crazy crazy shit we've got going on here and i think it'll essentially allow us to i believe there's also something called cybernet as well yeah there we go allows us to connect up our colonists to this network as well depending on how advanced we want to go so this to me seems like something we should probably keep in smaller scope maybe only affect a few different colonists with it because we've got a load of different things going on here in form of the you know like evolved organs we've got the bionics we've got the, apparently the cybernetic thing coming in as well the porn morpher stuff I want to be very careful that we don't end up making everybody just a carbon copy of one another. So this might be just for our research team. Have them all hooked up to this crazy research network. I think that could be kind of cool. Again, I have no experience with this mod. So this is going to be a lot of uh, a lot of touch and go, I think, sort of understanding how it works. But it means that we might also need to extend this lab area once again. So even more building. How's the obelisk coming along? Oh, we're almost done. They're just delivering the last of the, uh, the, the forum there, I assume. Uh, where, where are we? What are we looking for? Is it you? Mining in a quarry. Who's, who's got the last of it? Uh, the construction bot. Hey, there we go. Thank you, construction bot. Right, let's get that stuff built as soon as possible. I really, really want to see how effective this, uh, this obelisk is. Damn it. And now the construction bot's building it, which means it's gonna probably take about four weeks. Alright, well, I'll see you guys in about ten episodes so that we can finally see what this goddamn obelisk looks like. Ooh, and we've almost finished another set of assault armor as well, so that should be another complete set, I believe. Let's take a look. So, I've, I've been having the hauling bots... Yeah, there we go. Prioritize the... 
the uh, assault armor over the other armors that we've got going on now. So we've got one more on the right there that needs to go actually on the rack here. Um, why is that not being hauled over then? What have I what have I done wrong this time? Let's take a look. So that's important priority. We've got the assault armor. Right, so assault armor should be able to be hauled urgently. Okay, that, that's why. They just hadn't got around to it yet, I assume. So they should move that automatically onto the racks. So what we also want to do then is go over to this one and just quickly drop this protective gear. Going to put that on the rack, which is again not really where we want it right now, my friend. Let's uh, quickly get that hauled over to Two. This should work. This absolutely should be, uh, there we go. And then let's get this one hauled over as well, if we can. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, doesn't like it. Doesn't like it. That's okay. I'm sure we'll work out in a second. But this is cool. We've almost got five full sets of the, uh, of the assault armor there. Then... I want to get them equipped with the flamethrowers. We'll have the assault armor equipped with the flamethrowers. We'll have our regular guys in our protective gear. Obviously, we do want to upgrade that at some stage as well to have that. What was that other set of gear I wanted to build as well at some stage? Um, what was it called? It was this It was this hazard, wasn't it? Ha hazard carapace. This will be super, super... Was it that one or was it the refractor? Honestly, don't remember. Armor heat 187. Oh, right, this one. That would explain a lot. Is that is that the best heat armor? I didn't really double check, but I'm pretty sure that was the best one. Oh yeah, almost certainly. 187% heat armor means if we can get a whole load of flamethrowers with that and then use our assault armor with our regular assault charges, we're going to be unstoppable. I, th I think our people are going to be feared across the realm. Here we go. At long last, glorious and mighty. Oh, it's so disappointing. Good God. All right. Um... <laughs> That's so disappointing. I'm going to install it this way around so we can at least see the... Oh my God, we can't move it. Still testing prototype. Oh right, okay. We actually need to we actually need to do the whole test run with it first to see if it's uh to see if it's working. It's part of the next step of the Rim Atomics research. Alright, let's move this over over here then. There we go. And just quickly get that hooked up. Perfect. So that should be in a second. Any minute now. Wait for it. Brace. Oh, maybe we've got to power it on first. Okay, that would make a lot of sense. The next step for our Rim Atomics, then, is to gather weapons data. Test fire the obelisk on any targets to collect data. And conveniently, just as we were building the outside wall and finishing off the outside gate, Jurassic Park 2.0, it's not like we haven't built one of these before, we had, very conveniently, big old psychic ship. Uh, it's a little bit far away from the obelisk, but it's not like we can't just... Oh, we can't reinstall it. Okay, I was going to say it's not like we can't reinstall it, but we actually literally cannot reinstall the fucking thing. Okay, so what we'll do then is we'll go around the wall, I guess, bait out the, uh, bait out the mechanoids and get them to come within range of the obelisk. I assume it can shoot over walls. I, I, I don't know, actually, in hindsight. I was going to say, I don't know if it actually needs vision on things. If that's the case, we're going to be able to hit them as they come up and round the gate. Let's just get everybody equipped and we'll give it a test. We've got all that assault armor now, so this should be uh, should be interesting, I think is the right word for it. No storage space for what exactly? Um, nothing. No storage space for nothing. Well, that's always good to know. Sorry, I should draft you up first, then hit the equip button. Let's try that again. We want to let the obelisk kill as many as possible just because I think we will need to get... I, I know from playing this previously with the... Uh, even, even like this thing, the radar system, we have to specifically shoot down X amount of mortar shells before we, we fully complete that sort of research mission. So it might be the same thing with this where we actually need to shoot multiple different things. It just says test fire the obelisk on any targets to collect data. Oh, 0 out of 50. So I believe that just means 5 shots, each shot giving 10 points, but... If it is 50 things, that's not such a big deal, because it's not like this thing's not going to be able to hit anything that comes through the kill box as well. Right, let's give it a go. Let's see, let's see what happens here. So we just want to wake him up, lure him around the other side of the gate, and, and see what we can do here. Now, ideally, doing as much damage as possible to the ship itself might be enough to bait them over permanently. Like, we might not have to keep going back and forth and back and forth. Right, so let's take everyone and then attack. Uh, what sort of range are we looking at? We might have to get a little bit closer here. All right, who's our slowest people? It's probably going to be one of the people in that... Oh, Feral is hunting Dominique for food. Yeah, good luck getting through there. Um, all right, let's give this a go then. Let's go. Also, why the hell would you hunt the people in the battle armor? Right, okay, good luck. Here we go. Oh, that's a... Oh my god, that's a lot of mechanoids. Uh, now we run. Now we run. Now we run. I should have probably just sent over one person as bait rather than... Oh, the game doesn't like it. Rather than 50 people. All right, off we go. Off we go. Off, off you... Run away. Run away. Oh god, Zhu. Oh my god, no. Run, 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 run. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Zoo is dead. Zoo is dead. I'm sorry. I'm not I'm not waiting around for this. Hopefully, understandably, I am not waiting around for this. Zoo is probably completely fucked. Smudge Boggle, run. I I overestimate. I underestimate. Oh my god. Aid, fuck off. Come on. You didn't fire at anything but our own person, then, you weird man. Oh, for God's sake. Well, Smudge Boggle is almost certainly dead as well, then. Um, That's unreal. That is unreal. Uh, out of every shot that was fired out of that napalm launcher, it only hit Smudge Boggle. The fire might go down. Um, what the fuck's going on there? Oh, it's a spotlight, right. 
I see. I was wondering what the hell that was. So let's stand up here next to the... Oh, the obelisk is glowing. Uh, it do be like that. It do be like that. Okay, uh, what does that mean then? Five out of 50. Okay, so it's probably 10 shots then. Um, that's called mathematics. Okay, let's see what we can do. Go for it. Oh, it's got a long cooldown on it though, huh? It's got very, very long cooldown, but we seem to have baited the uh, mechanoids over to us, which is quite nice. My god, that's got a huge cooldown. Shit, okay, focus on, focus on that. Oh, there we go, hang on. Oh, 135 damage is quite nice. It's not fantastic, but it's certainly not bad. Um, out those turrets are about to all go sky high. Oh my god, look at my walls. My poor walls. Oh god, the robots are coming over here as well. Back off, back off, back off. Recall all, recall all. Go, go home, go home, fuck off. Okay, how are we doing? Neither is you or Smudgebog are dead. And the rain's coming in. Wow, that's great. Okay, so we might be okay here. Um, yeah, that was a state. That was a state. I could have done that in a hundred different better ways. Uh, okay, so now we're going to see the centipedes come around. These are the things that are really going to kick our ass, if anything is. Kill that mammoth, because that thing's soaking up so much fire. Right, what's our long range? Uh, was it Hellfire that, that does the long range weapons? Let's try that instead. Good luck, team. Here we go. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. We're going to have to get a bit closer because the centipedes can hit us from here and we... Why would you select those ones? The centipedes can hit us from here, but we can't hit them. So let's um, let's, let's swap things. Oh, it's very laggy. Oh, it's very laggy. I can't really control our guys very well, I'll be honest. Well, there we go. Let's move a little bit further. Get within the trees a little bit. Right, there we go. Come on. Come on, I'm like, What is hitting that guy? Oh, we've got the other flame turrets. I completely forgot I reinstalled those. Hey, nice work. Okay, how are we looking? We should be fine. One more barrage from those. Yeah, there we are. There we are. Come on, there's not much more to this now. Just take out a couple more. You guys get between those trees as well. Oh, it's so laggy. Fuck me. Yeah, no, that was um, that was really bad. I don't think anyone's going to die, but that was extremely dangerous. Um, thank God for the rain is all I can say. Obelisk, a little bit disappointed, I will admit. I'm a little bit disappointed by it. it it's very, very slow to fire. We still need to do a lot more weapons testing. Um, yeah, and it's also offline because they cut through the only cable going to it. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot that we've got to consider when actually using this thing in the future. My god, these things are seriously kicking our ass, aren't they? Let's get a bit closer still. Right, there we go. This is where those fire armor would be even better still. Right, we're done. We're good, yeah? I think that's the end of it. Okay, please don't fire Please don't fire at the, the, the poor innocent visitor. Brilliant. You can stop firing! What is wrong with you? Fucking hell! Oh, there's another one there. Okay, sorry, my, my bad. I mean, even so, stop fucking firing. We've got... Talk about... Have we got the friendly fire mod enabled still? Or am I going nuts? Aiden, what are we looking at? Search and destroy. Oh, right. The, this gun doesn't have the option for friendly fire? Well, I guess that... Oh, wait. Where is all the options for friendly fire? Oh, so only some of them have the option for friendly fire. What the fuck's going on there? Avoid friendly fire. Was was turned off, so they shouldn't do it, right? As I, as I recall, if it's turned... I don't remember. It doesn't matter either way. We're good. Right, okay. Um, That was a little bit of a mess, I'll be honest. Azua's got a day before they bleed out, and this person's not even going to die. No one's going to die. But we've taken a lot of flame damage. To be honest, if we're using any of those napalm launchers, I'm thinking we might want to go full board all of those refractive armor sets. Just just, just get everybody with those equipped. Because otherwise, we are we risk killing our own people more than anything else here. To be honest, I guess having... They're not exactly the expensive, are they? So I guess a load of the obelisks are sort of staggered. So they fire at different times. So they're, they're off of, you know, cooldown. We don't want them all firing simultaneously because one shot from an obelisk is probably enough to kill a man. So we don't want... A lot of them firing at the same time, otherwise it's just kind of a waste of uh, input. So we could stagger a lot of them, you know, sort of in this area, even if we build them some all the way back here. Obviously, we can't build any more until we finish testing the prototype. But even building them all the way down here, they'll still be able to hit the things in the kill box, and it's covering more of our base. But those two won't fire simultaneously, so they'll probably acquire different targets as well. So when one's off of cooldown, the other one will be able to fire again, or, or one will be firing as the other comes off of cooldown, or something like that. Um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of testing. That was interesting. That was interesting. Was that worth 10,000 silver? N meh. I think it's probably the, 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 it's probably my official uh, official statement on that. We are going to go for the test of coil as well, because I think that's 100% that's accurate medium range. So I guess this thing is very, very slow, but very long range. I guess the test of coil is medium range, but probably fires, hopefully fires slightly faster. Oh, this is, uh, this is very weird. So we've got the Glutonet cables, which I assume we just took up to anything. And then from what I can tell, like I said, I've never used this mod before. I've really no experience with it at all besides the, the, the brief thing I've read on the Steam Workshop page. So it says here, the core of a Glutonet system, a powerful computing system capable of coordinating and processing the massive amounts of data. Unfortunately, the architecture of the Glutonet system requires only one hub be connected to any given device. What does that mean? Uh... 
I don't know. Okay, unfortunately, the architecture requires only one hub to be connected. Is that a bad thing? Why is that a bad thing? I have no idea why that's a bad thing, but they've said unfortunately, so it must be. So what do we need here? 250 steel. Do we need one of those per... I mean, what, what can we do with our hub, though? Capable of processing highly demanding calculations. Okay, the general auxiliary processor, right? So basic listening at processor. Then we've got basic work speed integrators. Um, capable of performing up to... Uh, capable of improving the performance of up to two connected buildings. So I assume if we hooked that up to, say, I don't know, these these two via the Glitternet hub. If we connected this up to these two, uh, th these two workbenches here, they would work faster. That's what I'm, uh, that's, that's how I'm interpreting what I'm reading here. I think I will need to go away and do some research on this, or at least a lot of testing. We've got, like, power integrators here. Make, it makes buildings more power efficient. So, say, for example, with the research benches, we can cut them down from 250 watts to, like, I don't know, up 200 watts, for example. Um, bed integrator. So, that allows us to, up to two integrators, maybe connect to building that specialized equipment. Right, right. So, what we could do is go for a work speed integrator and a research integrator on the same network as the hub. Connected up to the processor, connected up to the research benches. So in theory, our research would go a lot quicker, right? And then we could build a second one for our lab. So with the basic medical and bed integrator, we build a build a, a glycotech network for the lab up there, right? I don't know if I'm interpreting this properly, but this is how I'm this is how I'm guessing it works. We're gonna give it a go up in the uh up in the hospital first. So let's put down a hub because I assume this is obviously the the starting point, right? We'll put down a processor, uh, and then we'll put down a medical integrator and we'll put down a bed integrator and i assume any amount of things can be hooked up to this right up to two integrators maybe connected to a building so what do you mean by building though like room or do, now building in rim world refers to any installable like, like this would count as a building inverted commas if we go over to the stockpile that's probably the best way to to illustrate that so if we clear all if we go to the section that says buildings uh, so there you go. You see that that that's that means just basically things like uh, the, these things here: autopsy table, uh, butcher's table, clone vats, drug slab, electric smelters. Those are buildings in inverted commas. So actually, I don't know if this would work. You know what? We're going to build it here anyway. I'm sure we can always reinstall it if this is completely wrong. Thank you all for watching. What a weird episode. There's research all over the place. It's going to take a long time to get to where we want to go, but. Trashy's back, so that's increased our research load by, by honestly, a shitload there by himself, because he's got 15.42 with his research coat, with his, with his gear. Trashy is going to be a valuable, valuable asset to this colony. What a, this is weird. We're going into weird territory with mods I've never touched on before, so this is going to be very strange. Thank you all for watching, and more importantly, a big thank you has to go out to the insane top tier level patrons who have made this series and the channel possible in the first place. So a big thank you to Aiden W, Alchemia, Anthony Gorley, Asuna Kurato, Atmos, the Savage Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Ben Hofflin, Chesty, Croesus, Donald, Doolin of Gondolin, Fukunda Vasquez, Ghost of Protocol, Gogola, Sarik, James Shea, Jimbo, Jonah Waters, Justin Wallace, Kanan Carter, Michael Mullen, My Name Isn't Dio, Musk Ratful, Nat Buskus, No. 1, Necrophil, and Pelvis Presley, Rodin, Richard Clark, Scott, Skaz, Smeg Mustaine, Somnus, The Forsaken One, T Bag Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, Tyler McLam, Vacuous Packers, Void Prince Kibo, William Green, and Sassy7011. Big shout out to these guys for their support, the Insanity Loves on Patreon. Thank you guys for making this channel possible in the first place. And a thank you has to go out as well to Uwu Daddy, Asaro, Adam Person, Andrew Walsh, Andrew Wilson, Anchor, Attila, Austin Taylor, Bortoon, Ben Troke, Brian Gunn, Bestmas Max, Better Valerian, Black Double H, Chris, Corgi Circus, Corey C.A., David Van Diepen, Don, Dunk Honey 217, Emerald Beam, Exploding Knees, Gaz, Genji Zerka, Gothamo, Grey, Haji Demar, Icarus, Ice of the Grey, Ida C, J. Lara, Jackson P, Jacob Wolfie, James Barnes, J. Jason Sushu, good god, I'm losing my losing my place on this list. There's so many J's. My god, I've never realized that before. Jose, Jeebus Christ, Euron the Breeze, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Peer, Justin Pluck, Justin Walters, Luana Thomas, Luke Wallace, Mustolp, Monty, Mosey Sampson, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Limburg, Nostros, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Organized Confusion, i.e. this list. Pan Samu, Panth Pearl, Payback 1 through 7, Peyton Denisar, Rush Nolgar, Billionaire, Brian Hooper, Sagatair, Sam Kears, Shari, Smirtworm, Smooth Octopus, Socrates, Super Nanny 089. The Insane Pickle, The One Ring, Volonkari, Varagon, Voodoo Mumbo, Will Wade, Bruce and Tef, Wolfie, Yorker, Zack, and Zico 2. Thank you all for your support. This, is, this has gone weird. This whole series has gone so weird.